Batman's voice change reveals our biases that he cleverly uses to fool us, and some much darker secrets about his character. Hello everyone, welcome to Trick Theory, the channel formerly known as Trick Science because I'm all about science and learning, and after one of YouTube's greatest teachers said that I am clearly in the theory space, despite my fears of being seen as a ripoff, I decided to make the change, paying homage to the people that inspired me. So being a proud part of YouTube's theory space, over Batman's many long years, he has has used several different methods to disguise his voice, and for good reason. From using a voice modulator in the live-action Justice League films to altering his voice at a moment's notice himself in most other versions, some with more extreme changes than others. Specifically in the comics, and likely the animated versions, we see Alfred using his training as a former stage actor to teach Bruce how to control his voice, so he can master what are the three fundamental attributes of a person's voice, being their pitch or how fast your vocal cords vibrate to produce the unique sound that is your voice, with higher vibrations raising your pitch, while less vibrations give you the opposite Batman-like effect, then the second being your volume or how loud or soft your voice is perceived, with the third effect being your tempo, which is how fast or slow you choose to speak. All collectively, these three things can be called PVT. Shout out to Saban Epstein. Specifically in the animated series, we see Bruce take phone calls as Bruce Wayne about official Batman business, and he quickly changes his voice to match, while other times we see Batman take calls for Bruce Wayne, and it's actually quite strange to see. Hey, what's up, Doc? I'll return the favor next time you're raising funds. Bye-bye. This computer checked that fiber against every animal species known to man. To get the gist of how Bruce changes from his Bruce Wayne voice to Batman, as Bruce Wayne, Bruce clearly makes an effort to tense his vocal cords, thus raising his pitch, as he speaks with less force, which softens his voice to be quieter, which is perceived as him being more gentle. And at times, he speaks a little faster. Upon donning the cape and cowl, Bruce has trained himself to instantly reverse these three traits, forcing more air through his vocal cords to speak louder, while at the same time, he actually relaxes his entire body more when he does speak, and this unrestrained, relaxed voice allows him to project his voice much farther without any strain at all, so he can terrorize the criminals of whatever building he happens to be storming. Batman also slows down his tempo a tad, and above all, he notably relaxes his vocal cords as much as he can, dramatically dropping his vocal range or pitch to his famous dark and brooding voice, and go all the way down to your glottal fry, and now you've truly got a voice no one will recognize as you. So why? What does Bruce changing his voice actually accomplish? Well, the easy one is the fact that it makes sure that no one ever connects Gotham's wealthiest bachelor that they just saw at a local press event to the guy running around their city at night. And while most people may not actually get the chance to hear Batman speak, a crooked cop or Gotham supervillain he stopped the night before just might make the connection. Heck, on multiple occasions, occasions, we even see Commissioner Gordon become suspicious at the fact that a new hero suddenly appeared right after the city's golden boy mysteriously returned. A hero who runs around with a host of fancy and rather expensive equipment at that. In titles like Batman Year One, we see Bruce go to some pretty extreme lengths to conceal his identity, acting like a perpetually drunk womanizer who's not afraid to speak like a rich boy, and give Gordon's wife an accidental flash just to stave off rousing suspicion. Because as outlandish as this may sound, once word gets around that the city's richest resident could possibly be the Batman, no amount of alcohol or charity events is going to keep certain criminals and a truckload of unwanted press at bay. And let me tell you, someone matching the voice of the Batman to Bruce Wayne might actually be easier than you think. For the time being, humans still reign supreme over AIs like Alexa at being able to recognize the unique sound of someone's voice for however long that lasts. And chances are, if you receive a phone call from a family member, you're likely to recognize who you're speaking to by the time they finish saying hello. In fact, studies do show that you're able to identify a person whose voice you're familiar with after hearing just two words, even being able to pick them out among other people who are all speaking at once. This is because humans are remarkable at identifying somebody based on just the sound of their voice. So much so that scientists really don't 
don't fully know why. For the time being, scientists do know that we can recognize an individual based upon their unique pitch, we can account for changes in that person's pitch as they are speaking, as well as pick up on that person's natural cadence, tempo, and ultimately we imprint a template or model of how that person sounds into us for easy access in the future. But what's bizarre and bad news for an Adam West Batman is that researchers keep discovering just how fused a person's auditory and visual brains really are. Because this means when speaking to someone on the phone, scientists found that the visual area of the brain also turned on. And not only did it turn on, but they found that whether you're just looking at someone or only hearing them, the same region of your brain turns on regardless. That you will always attempt to associate the way someone sounds to their face and vice versa. The only big exception to all of this is that we're pretty terrible at recognizing speakers who speak in a language that is foreign to us, even if it's someone we've previously heard speaking in a language we already know. And we have a difficult time identifying someone's speaking voice who we've only heard shouting on the subway that one time. Which is why ear witness testimonies are notoriously unreliable. But for Gothamites, Bruce Wayne is likely someone whose face and voice they're familiar with, at least enough for a mass of them to have an internalized template or speaker model for him. And for this reason, Bruce has to train himself to have a fairly substantial overhaul in his pitch and tempo to throw most people off his scent. And sometimes even that's not enough. His Batman voice, though, also serves a different purpose, one that preys upon our human biases, our psychological fears, to a fairly extreme extent. Flaws that both you and I may see in ourselves. And with me now making a push to be a proud part of YouTube's tangential learning space, and not one of the many faceless AI channels that are on the rise, let's go through these. The dual purpose that Batman's voice gives him, other than protecting his identity, is most certainly fear and intimidation. And this is where I would like you to meet attribution bias. The bias that people tend to attribute certain traits or characteristics to individuals based on limited information. That when people hear Batman's deep, resonant voice coming out from the shadows, they quickly attribute dominant, aggressive traits to him, thinking that they are likely dealing with a large and brutal figure. And they're not wrong. Except we see this bias completely take over the minds of criminals he attacks, with them thinking that he has to be something special. That he might not actually be human to scare them to the extent that he does. And this is where we can stack on a powerful bias that you are likely to have encountered known as resentment to excellence or tall poppy syndrome. This is the tendency for people to criticize or determine that the reason someone was able to best them is because they have to have some unfair advantage. That no man dressed in a Halloween costume could fairly beat them in a fight, outthink them, let alone beat the crap out of them and all of their friends. No, Batman has to be something else entirely, a monster, a demon. Research even shows shows that Batman's deep voice is better for intimidation than much anything else. Specifically, they found that males evolutionarily have deep voices not to attract females, but rather to intimidate the competition, to show dominance. After all, men with deeper voices signal that they have more testosterone, leading to stronger muscles, less cortisol, giving them a stronger immune system, which while being attracted to females, the link to dominance was shown to be three times stronger than the link to attractiveness. And as we showed in the video on how human biases allow Superman to get away with being Clark Kent, it's likely that after beating up a slew of criminals and taking down Gotham's mob bosses in just his first year, Batman's reputation became forever cemented, that he really doesn't have to do much else to keep it up. Thanks not only to stereotyping, but more likely to anchoring bias. Where Batman's entire reputation and public perception that followed for years to come for who he is, what he must be like, all sprang from the initial encounters criminals had with them. Basically, anchoring bias means that everything about him, his legend, his ability to inspire fear, relies heavily on the first piece of information anyone hears about the Bat of Gotham. And oh boy, did that information spread, allowing Bruce to sit back and essentially watch as Gotham's criminals skewed who he was into someone they should fear. And from then on, Bruce's job as Batman would be all too easy with him riding the wave of what is known as confirmation bias, where criminals, upon encountering him, were likely to not only be scared out of their minds, but both during and coming away from the encounter
encounter are likely to fall victim to the Batman legend bias, or better known as confirmation bias, where the whole time once someone has their initial opinion formed or anchored into them, they would only be watching out for even exaggerating any evidence that would confirm their beliefs, their suspicions, downright ignoring anything that would contradict those beliefs. And all of these biases go for both the Batman and the drunk, carefree bachelor Bruce Wayne. Cause for anyone that is still suspicious enough to make a connection, Bruce still has one last human bias up his sleeve. One bias that is just too good for most people to pass up. Dissonance reduction. Where anytime anyone is faced with any sort of evidence, sees Bruce walking out of a secret room or bruises on his body, this new information creates what is known as cognitive dissonance, or basically causes a separation, a gap to occur between what they already believe and what the new information is telling them. And rather than accepting that a seemingly carefree playboy is, in reality, a highly skilled and disciplined superhero, most people instead to choose to reduce this conflict by outright rejecting, avoiding, or justifying the idea that Bruce Wayne is Batman to not be true. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. When Bruce becomes Batman, he is said to actually relax his voice into his natural speaking voice, whereas he has to work to change his voice into the act that is Bruce Wayne. While the opposite is said for Superman, with Clark Kent being who he really is, while Superman is the act. Where we go over the biases that allow Superman's disguise to fool us in this video. Remember though, it's all a trick. See you in the next one.